हॉनरेबल गवर्नर honorable chairman on the pradesh state legislative council honorable speaker on the pradesh Leg legislative assembly and honorable members of the state legislature it is indeed an honor and privilege for me to address the joint session of the present legislative assembly on this momentous occasion of the current budget session 2024-25. On being elected with an unprecedented mandate, my government has so far presented <coughs> four budgets and implemented a slew of welfare and development programs for the benefit of hitherto neglected sections. And it would not be an exaggeration if I say my government has put its heart and soul in fulfilling its promises. At the outset, <coughs> I place on record my deep sense of appreciation to the commitment of Honorable Chief Minister and the State Administration in installing the 206 feet statue of Dr. Baba Saheb Bhimrao Ramji Ambedkar. The magnificent statue built in a sprawling campus of 18.81 acres in Dr. B. R. Ambedkar Swaraj Maidan in the heart of Vijayawada city at the cost of 404.35 crores will remain in the history as a place to visit and to cherish its elegance for generations to come in the state of Andhra Pradesh. It stands as a testimony to my government's commitment to social justice, equality, and empowerment. I am pleased to inform this August House that, under the astute leadership of Honorable Chief Minister Sri Vyas Jagan Mohan Redigaru, this pro-poor government has touched every section of the society, especially the underprivileged, vulnerable, and those in need of support, be it the farmer, the unemployed youth, the auto driver, the weaver, senior citizens, women, children, or any other member who is socially and economically backward has benefited in one way or the other from my government. Now, building human capital. Soon after coming to power, my government has observed that Andhra Pradesh is falling behind some of the other states in certain social parameters like quality education, learning outcomes, nourishment to school children, IMR, MMR, and anemia amongst women, to name a few. To raise the parameters of Human Development Index in Andhra Pradesh, my government immediately launched Navaratnalu, which focuses on social, economic and educational empowerment of targeted groups. The results of the efforts of my government are conspicuous in all outcomes. The Niti Aayog, in their recent discussion paper jointly published with the UNDP and Oxford Policy and Human Development in Initiative on Multidimensional Poverty, has projected a steep decline in the poverty headcount ratio in Andhra Pradesh from 4.19% in 2022-23 from 11.77% in 2015-16.
with India aspiring single digit level of poverty from the current level of 11.25 by 2024-25, the phenomenal performance of Andhra Pradesh clearly demonstrated positive and tangible outcomes delivered by a galaxy of pro-poor schemes and policies of the state. My government prioritizes education like nowhere else in the country by initiating path-breaking and innovative schemes targeting improvement in learning outcomes and preparing every child studying in government schools for a bright future and to be globally competitive, believing that investment in education always gives the highest return. My government spent rupees 73,417 crores so far exclusively on these novel schemes introduced in the education sector. Soon after assuming power, my government has noticed that the gross enrollment ratio in primary education in 2017 was 84.48 percent compared to the national average of 99.21 percent and identified the urgency of a policy intervention to address this issue with an intent to make sure that poverty does not prevent parents from educating their children my government launched a unique and innovative scheme, Jagananna Ammawadi, in 2019, under which the government directly deposits an annual financial assistance of Rs. 15,000 in the bank accounts of the mothers belonging to BPL families, with children studying from class 1 to intermediate. So far, an amount of Rs. 26,000 67 crore has been spent benefiting 43.61 lakh mothers and 83 lakh children annually under this initiative. Due to these timely interventions, the state has witnessed remarkable increase in GER at all levels of education during the last four years from 84.48% to 100.08% at the present primary level from 79.69% to 100% at secondary level and to 79.69% from a meager 46.88% at a higher secondary level. To ensure better learning outcomes in school-going children, my government has taken up the Manabadi Nadu Nedu program with an aim to modernize and provide adequate infrastructure in 56,703 institutions, which includes government schools, welfare hostels, and junior colleges in three phases. The modernization and infrastructure development works have been completed in all 15,715 government schools in phase one, and works have been taken up in 22,344 schools in phase two, so far, seventh, rupees 7,163 crore has been expended under Nadu Nedu modernization of the balanced schools will be taken up in the next phase. My government has set up school maintenance fund for maintenance of all the assets and equipments created under Nadu Nedu. Similarly, for maintaining the cleanliness of the toilets, urinals, dress change rooms, wash basins, and other associated items, my government has set up toilet, toilet maintenance fund. Further, 46,661 ayas have been placed in 44,800 schools and junior colleges. Jagananna Gorumudda is being implemented in the state for children of class 1 to 10 in government school. This is a revamped midday meal program with additional nutritious food items in the menu providing hot cooked healthy, tasty and qualitative nutritious food with 16 variety items every week including ragi java drink to address the issue of malnutrition amongst children. So far, the government has incurred an amount of rupees 4,417 crores annually spending 
rupees 910 crore for 43.27 lakh students the annual spend is four times more than the expenditure of rupees 450 crore midday meal scheme incurred by the previous government shifting from the uncertain times wherein books uniform or other items were supplied without adhering to the timelines my government has ensured that a kit consisting of a bag three pairs of uniforms <coughs> including stitching charge a belt a pair of shoes and two pairs of socks textbooks notebooks workbooks and an english to telugu oxford dictionary under the jagannana vidya kanuka is provided before the reopening of the schools every year benefiting 47 lakh children per year and incurring an amount of rupees 3367 crores so far during the last 4 years digital learning has been the cornerstone of educational reforms in the state with an aim to making student from socially deprived background globally competitive my government has distributed 952925 tabs with preloaded byju's content of classes 8 to 9 and 9 and to 8 eight class students with an expenditure of rupees 1306 crores in order to achieve enhanced learning outcomes my government is installing 62000 interactive screens in classrooms for classes 6 to 12 and 45000 smart TVs in primary schools with an expenditure of rupees 838 crore the content shared by byju and the e content prepared by scert andhra pradesh is being utilized for ensuring more effective learning among students my government has introduced extensive curricular reforms in the school education the long term objective is to make the children studying in the government schools be prepared for the challenges and evolve into global citizens furthermore my government has recently entered into a mou with international baccalaureate to make them a part of scert this move will bridge the educational divide between rich and poor students commencing with capacity building and training of the teachers in 2024 25 classes for first class in ib system will start from june 2025 onwards june 2026 for class second and will be increasing it one class each year so that students will get joint certification of ib and scert in 2035 and class 12 certificate in 2037 keeping in view the benefits of the english language to develop individuals ability to understand and use english and to enable the student to be globally competitive my government has introduced toefl in schools that is teaching english as foreign language to address the current learning requirements my government is deploying future skills experts to oversee the available digital infrastructure to streamline digital infrastructure management and contribute to more efficient and effective educational processes future skills experts are mapped to 6790 government high schools in the state the government is committed to making intermediate education accessible by upgrading high schools in every mandal of the state as government junior colleges one exclusively for girls and one for co-education to increase geographical access 294 government high schools have been upgraded into high schools plus for girls from the academic year 2022-23 my government is giving utmost importance to higher education andhra pradesh is the only state in the country to take complete responsibility for providing higher education to 100% of its eligible students free of cost 
without any financial burdens on their families. The government has initiated path-breaking reforms to transform the youth of the state into an enlightened, enlightened and employable global citizens ready to tackle future global challenges. My government is revised. Government revised the curriculum by including four years honors degree along with job-oriented modules and 30% skill development courses to increase the employability of the students. With a view to ensure that higher education is accessible even to children of disadvantaged sections, my government is reimbursing total fees under Jagananna Vidya Divena. Under the scheme, amount is transferred directly on, on a quarterly basis into the student and mother's accounts whose children pursue ITI, Polytechnic, Degree, Engineering, Medicine, B Pharmacy and other courses. So far, rupees 11,901 crores have been reimbursed to 26.98 lakh beneficiaries. through Jagananna Vasati Divena. Our government is providing allowance up to rupees 20,000 for boarding and lodging charges in two installments every year into the joint accounts of the mothers and students. All children in a family are entitled to this assistance under the scheme. So far, the state government has dispersed an amount of rupees 4,276 crores to 25 lakh 17,245 beneficiaries under this scheme. My government is supporting the aspirations of the students who wish to study abroad under the Jagananna Videshi Vidya Divena. Poor students can now pursue quality overseas education in any of the 21 identified faculties in top 50 educational institutions. I'm, and my government is reimbursing total fees up to 1.25 crores for the purpose. In last 10 months, total financial assistance of 107.08 crores has been provided under the scheme for enhancing the employability skills of the students to make them job ready. Placement linked industry relevant short term skill development course are offered. My government is implementing various skill development activities through the Andhra Pradesh Skill Development Corporation to create a skilled workforce as per the industry requirements. <coughs> Cascading skill ecosystem, an integrated and holistic framework has been created in the state to nurture the talent of Andhra Pradesh youth and fulfill the skills manpower needs of all stakeholders in line with dynamic industrial advancement. We are also taking steps to fill up 3,295 vacant teaching posts in 18 universities. Our, our government has signed a MOU with edX, an internationally renowned online education platform. The understanding is that EDX will provide 2,000 courses in emerging areas and advanced technologies. 12 lakh students of Andhra Pradesh will have access to these courses at no cost. These courses are prepared by the world's best universities such as MIT, Stanford, Oxford, Cambridge, etc. Each of our students will get at least one certification from these world's best universities. Due to the sustained efforts put in place by the government, the improvement in the education-related indicators such as enrollments, school dropouts, and out-of-school children has been substantial, leading to improved levels in goal four pertaining to quality education of the sustainable development goals. Now, aspiring health, healthy Andhra Pradesh. The quality of health care system and services in the society that define governance is considered as critical factor for human development index. 
health care is a very important factor to determine the physical and mental well-being of the people and is recognized as a great contributor to the state's economy. My government has completely revamped the medical infrastructure and medical education in the state. Maternal health care, child health care and family health care services are ensured through 10,132 Dr. YSR village health clinics. 1,142 primary health centers, 177 community health center, 53 area hospitals, 9 district hospitals, 3 specialty hospitals, and 3 civil dispensatories under ABVVP, 11 teaching hospitals, and 15 specialty hospitals under medical education. Apart from these, 542 UPHCs are facilitating health access to the urban population of the state. Through the Nadu Nedu program, government is revamping the existing health infrastructure and putting, place, putting in place a robust decentralized public health care infrastructure for strengthening primary, secondary and tertiary health care infrastructure in the state. Being strengthening, besides strengthening the existing 11 medical colleges in the state, the government has embarked on construction of 17 new medical colleges with nursing colleges, five multi speciality hospitals in tribal areas. We have recently inaugurated super speciality hospital, cancer hospital, and Institute of Mental Health at Kadapa and Kidney Research Center at Palasa. During the last three years, concerted efforts have been made to increase human resources in medical and health sector by filling up the existing vacancies. <coughs> Sorry. 53,126 medical personnel <coughs> are recruited under this mission. A medical recruitment board has been created <coughs> to fill the vacancies as and when they arise. <coughs> or <have> some throat irritation. <laughs> <coughs> Under the innovative, unique health initiative of the state, family doctor scheme, doctor program, PHCs were reorganized to ensure two PHCs in each mandal or one PHC and one CHC. This is a new chapter in preventive care. Each PHC is provided with two doctors and 12 other paramedical staff to ensure better quality of preventive health care. The family doctor along with health team visit the secretariats, map to them and ensure that the same village is visited at least twice a month. They also visit Ankanawadi centers to conduct antenatal and postnatal checkup. Under the family doctor program, 3.03 crore OP services, of which 1.32 crore unique patient services were provided so far to the rural people at their own villages. Towards achieving the goal of Jagananna Arogya Suraksha, program has been, sorry, sorry, to, towards achieving the goal of Arogya Andhra Pradesh, Jagananna Arogya Suraksha program has been launched under which the CHOs, ANMs visit households in rural and urban areas and conduct tests at their houses. Health camps are also organized by specialists in all villages, wards covering one village secretariat in every mandal and every ward secretariat in urban local bodies. To act as a lifeline during emergencies and provide medical assistance to the public, 1,704 vehicles have been made available for 104 and 108 ambulance services with an expenditure of rupees 1,208 crores and ensured that every PHC has at least one 104 vehicle. Under Dr. Vyasar Aragyashri scheme, 
which aims to achieve universal health coverage in the state is designed to cover the health benefits to all the eligible 1.48 crore BPL families of the state with an annual income up to rupees 5 lakhs with no premium collector from the beneficiaries and with the state being the entire expenditure of treatment, state bearing the entire expenditure of treatment, the limit under this scheme has been enhanced recently to rupees 25 lakhs. Under the scheme, 2,315 empaneled network hospitals perform 3,257 procedures, including high-end procedures like <coughs> bilateral cochlear implant surgery and treatment for cancer without any ceiling limit. Since 2019, about 36 lakhs patients have been benefited under YSR Arogeshri and the cumulative expenditure incurred under works out to rupees 12,150 crores with a view to provide post-procedural sustenance allowance to the patient undergoing treatment under Arogeshri, an amount at rupees 225 per day subject to a maximum of rupees 5,000 per month under YSR Arogya Asara scheme will be provided for as many days as prescribed by the doctor. Due to the number of innovative initiatives put in place by my government, there has been noteworthy improvement on the health and nutrition related indicators under goal 3 of the sustainable development indicator. Now about farmers, a backbone of Andhra Pradesh. With about 62% of the population still depending on agriculture and allied sectors, the GSDP contribution from this sector is as high as 36% compared to 18% at the national level. My government has been supporting the farmers in every possible way to lift them from distress and make farming profitable. My government is extending YSR Raitu Bharosa PM Kisan assistance of Rs. 13,500 per year, not only to the farmers cultivating their own lands, but also to eligible SC, ST, BC, minority tenant farmers and farmers cultivating ROFR forest and endowment lands. My government has dispersed so far Rs. 33,300 crores to 53.53 lakh farmers under the scheme till date. Our government has established 10,778 Dr. YSR Raitu Bharosa Kendralu, which have effectively evolved as one-stop centers to meet farmers' needs right from supply of seed to sale of crop in their village itself. The, the government is arranging supply of pre-certified quality inputs to the farmers through RB case. RBKs are designated as procurement centers and are providing minimum support price to the farmers. Banking services are provided at RBKs through business correspondence of major banks. Andhra Pradesh is the only state in India to implement universal free crop insurance where the farmers share a premium is paid by the state government on behalf of the farmers for all crops notified under this scheme. So far, government has settled claims of rupees 54.75 lakh farmers worth rupees 7,802.5 crores, an amount of rupees 1,835 crores of interest subvention was credited directly into the accounts of 73.88 lakh small and marginal farmers who availed crop loans of rupees 1 lakh and repaid with the stipulated time under YSR Sunnavaddi Pantarunalu. My government is providing immediate relief to the farmers by dispersing compensation for crop loss by the end of the same season itself during which losses occur due to natural calamities. Rupees 1,977 crores of input subsidy was credited into 22.85 lakh farmers' accounts 
till date for the damage of agriculture and horticulture crops due to natural calamities. Through a unique initiative, my government is taking up digital recording of area sown in all the crop holdings of the farmers through e-crop booking for implementation of various farmer welfare programs mentioned above to ensure MSP to the farmers. Paddy is procured through RBKs at farm gate without the involvement of middlemen. The gunny usage charges, labor and transport costs as fixed by the government are being paid to the farmers along with paddy costs. So far, 3.34 crores MTs of paddy worth rupees 63,827 crores has, was purchased, ensuring timely MSP to 36,59,615 farmers. Over and above this, apart from the crops covered under MSC, MSP, my government is providing remunerative price for the other crops and has provided rupees 7,751 crore for procurement of those crops. My government acted upon swiftly to mitigate human loss and property loss to handle the recent Michong cyclone that has hit the coastal Andhra Pradesh affecting the crops and infrastructure. The government, besides providing relief assistance and special scale of assistance at the time of the cyclone to the affected people, has released an amount of rupees 347. 55 crores for immediate restoration of the damaged infrastructure. The crop damage has been assessed and input subsidy to the farmers whose crop got damaged is in process. The government has identified horticulture sector as one of the growth engines that drives agricultural economy, increasing the production, productivity and quality of various horticulture crops coupled with value chain development and marketing linkages for better price realization are some of the key strategies intended to help in increasing net returns. An area of 5,83,240 hectares has been brought under horticultural crops in the last four years, duly diversifying the crops by replacing less remunerative crops like upland paddy, tobacco, sugarcane, casuarina, eucalyptus, etc. Andhra Pradesh is the first state to announce MSC for, for horticulture crops, that is banana, turmeric, onion, sweet orange, chilies, over and above the coverage of GOI. Andhra Pradesh is the lastest, largest producer of fruits in the country, contributing 15.6% of the total country's food produc fruit production. The state ranks first in productivity of oil palm, papaya, lime, coconut, cocoa, tomato, chilies, and second in mango, sweet orange, cashew, and turmeric in India. Andhra Pradesh state stands at second place in the country after Gujarat in micro-irrigation implementation. So far, an area of 35.85 lakh acres has been covered under micro-irrigation in all the 26 districts in the state since inception, benefiting 12.74 lakh farmers. Over the years, livestock sector, uh, sector is known to offer consistent income even in adverse seasonal conditions. The state takes pride in the country for housing world-renowned livestock breeds like Angol and Punganur cattle, Nellore sheep and Asil poultry. My government has put in place several initiatives to increase the income of farmers through productivity enhancement of animals, ensure remunerative prices to the livestock products and make the fodder resources available to the farmers. The state stands first in egg production fourth in meat production and fifth in milk production in the country during 2022-23. Andhra Pradesh stands first in the total fish production in the country with 30% share and contributes 31% to seafood exports value of the country. 
the government of india has the government of india has awarded andhra pradesh as the best marine state for the year 2022-23 about 2.12 lakh hectares of area is brought under aquaculture and producing more than 75% of the cultured shrimp in the country making andhra pradesh state as the aqua hub of india with an award aim of welfare and development of fishermen families the government has enhanced the ban relief paid during the marine fishing ban period under ysr matsyakara bharosa to rupees 10000 so far our government has dispersed an amount of rupees 540 crores directly into the bank accounts of 243394 eligible beneficiaries the ex gratia being given to deceased fisherman family in case of death of active fisherman while fishing has been enhanced from 5 lakh to rupees 10 lakhs the state government has increased the subsidy on diesel oil from rupees 6.03 to rupees 9 per liter covering 20034 fishing boats incurring an amount of rupees of rupees 128.27 crores so far the government has also spent rupees 3186.36 crores so far to benefit 61682 aqua farmers towards power tariff concessions 35 integrated aqua labs are being established across the state with an expenditure of rupees 50.30 crores to ensure quality aqua products development of mother and child and women empowerment andhra pradesh is committed to focus on empowering women and use their capabilities in the state building process in a more effective way ensuring them of proper health nutrition and hygienic ambience the state is also committed to improving child health care and nutritional intake for enabling them to become better citizens by promoting social emotional cognitive development of the child through anganwadi services the services are being provided through 55607 main and mini anganwadi centers in andhra pradesh to address malnutrition and anemia वैसआर संपूर्ण पोषण प्लस इन ट्राइबल सब प्लान मंडल्स एंड वैसआर संपूर्ण पोषण इन प्लेन एरिया इज बी इंप्लीमेंटेड बै द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट थ्रू दीज प्रोग्राम ए टोटल ऑफ सिक्स पॉइंट फोर लैक प्रेग्नेंट विमेन एंड लैक्टेटिंग मदर्स ट्वेंटी एट थाउजेंड सिक्स ट्वेंटी एट पॉइंट सिक्स टू लैक् चिलड्र ऑफ सिक्स टू सेवेंटी टू मंथ्स एज आर गेटिंग बेनिफिटेड as part of reaching each and every beneficiary state government has been providing all the commodities at as take home ration a significant investment of rupees 6688 crores has been made under these schemes positively impacting 35.70 lakh beneficiaries my government has procured and distributed rupees 21800 two crore worth of growth monitoring devices to all the anganwadi centers in the financial year 2023-24 to improve nutrition and reduce the risk of inadequate nutrition and for early detection of growth disorder for safe transport of mothers and their newborns from government hospitals to their homes post delivery my government has procured 500 talli bidda express vehicles costing rupees 71 crores this initiative has benefited 3 lakh 27289 mothers with a view to improve and reinforce the women empowerment efforts and strengthen the economic development of the poor shg women in both rural and urban areas my government has been implementing the ysr asara program the objective of the scheme is to reimburse the entire bank outstanding loan amount as on 114 29 2019 directly to the group savings account 
of the SHG women in four installments. So far, 7,98,395 SHGs consisting of 78.84 lakh women got the benefit of an amount of rupees 25,571 crores over a period of four years. The growth of SHG bank linkage in the state of Andhra Pradesh is phenomenal. AP state stood in the first position in the country with 30% national share with 99.83% recovery under SHG bank linkage program with yearly bank linkage disbursement of above around rupees 30,000 crores in both rural and urban areas. With an intention to encourage better repayment culture, economic empowerment, and to reduce interest burden on the rural and urban self-help group members on their bank loans, my government has been implementing the YSR Sunnavaddi scheme so far. An amount of rupees 4,969.05 crores was dispersed to 9,76,119 SHGs in four <coughs> installments. YSR Cheyuta is yet another important scheme specifically targeted towards the welfare of the women in the state. It is a unique welfare program to extend financial assistance of rupees 75,000 in four years continuously at the rate of rupees 18,750 per annum to the same poor women belonging to SC, ST, BC and minorities in the age group of 45 to 60 years towards livelihood purposes. Through this scheme, nearly 26 lakh families will be engaged in the vibrant livelihoods by utilizing the direct assistance of rupees 18,750 every year and by raising additional finance through linkage and Strinidhi. So far, an amount of rupees 14,129 crores has been dispersed to 26.39 lakh beneficiaries. Fourth installment for rupees 5,064 crores will be dispersed in this month itself. The state government is extending financial assistance of rupees 75,000 under Vyasar Kapu Nestam in five years at the rate of rupees 15,000 per year to the same women in the age group of 45 to 60 years belonging to Kapu, Balija, Telaga and Ontari communities towards livelihood purposes. So far, an amount of rupees 2,029 crores has been dispersed directly into the bank accounts of 3,57,844 eligible beneficiaries under the scheme. Aiming towards financial empowerment of women belonging to economically backward classes, the state government has launched YSR EBC Nestam and providing financial assistance of rupees 15,000 per year to the same women in the age group of 45 to 60 years. So far, the government has dispersed an amount of 1,257.04 crores directly into the bank accounts of 4,39,068 eligible women beneficiaries. My government accords top priority for safety and security of women. As part of the safety of women, 1.46 crore citizens have been downloaded, downloaded the Disha app and 3,040 cases based on the complaints received through this app have been registered. Now about social security, transition from susceptibility to sustainability. The government is committed to providing permanent houses to all the eligible households in the state, duly providing house sites and housing under the scheme Pedala Andiriki Illu. Total of rupees 31.19 lakh house sites in the in 17,005 layouts have been distributed across the state in the name of women head of family. The cost of each site varies from 2.5 lakh to 15 lakh depending upon the location. 
among these house sites 22 lakh houses are being constructed nearly 9 lakh houses have already been completed and handed over to the beneficiaries remaining houses are under active progress the cost of each housing sanction including additional benefits providing is 2.7 lakhs over and above this nearly 32,909 crores is planned to be spent to provide infrastructure like water, electricity, drainage, roads in the layouts. As parts of part of Navaratnalu, my government has enhanced pension amount to ameliorate the hardships of the poor and vulnerable sections under YSR Penshuka Kanuka. All types of pensions like old age, old age persons and widows, artists, single women, transgenders, AIDS patients, disabled persons, fishermen and tappers who together account for 63.34 lakhs are being provided pension every month, helping them to lead a dignified life. My government has recently enhanced the pension amount from Rs. 2,750 to Rs. 3,000 for, from 1st January 2024. With this enhancement, the monthly pension budget has risen to 1,961 crores with the annual commitment nearly working out to Rs. 23,476 crores. So far, an amount of Rs. 86,692 crores have been dispersed to 66.3 point lakh beneficiaries. Andhra Pradesh is one of its kind in the country, providing financial assistance of rupees 10,000 per year to each of the driver come owners of auto, taxi and maxi cab and mobile dispensing units towards the needs of their vehicles. So far, my government has dispersed an amount of rupees 1,305 crores till date to 2,278,961 beneficiaries under YSR Vahanam Mitra scheme. To handhold and to make weavers' families owning a loom self-sustainable, my government is providing financial assistance of rupees 24,000 per year under the YSR Netana Nestam. So far, the state government has dispersed an amount of rupees 983 crores to 81,783 beneficiaries under this scheme. My government is providing a monthly stipend of rupees 30,000 for every six months for a period of three years <coughs> to the junior advocate who started their career practice newly and who have not completed 30 years of age. During 2023, an amount of rupees 11.83 crore was distributed benefiting 2,564 eligible junior advocates under YSR law Nestam. Under Jagananna Shiedodu, our government is extending financial assistance of rupees 10,000 per annum to Rajakas, Nai Brahmins and tailors who own shop. So far, an amount of rupees 1,268 crores has been dispersed directly into the bank account of rupees 3.40 lakh beneficiaries. <coughs> the state government has incurred an expenditure of rupees 521.73 crores for providing free power up to 200 units per month to 19.52 lakh SC ST household during 2023-24. Under the scheme Jagananna Todu, interest free loans up to rupees 10,000 are provided to petty traders street vendors and the artisans engaged in traditional handicrafts. The interest on the loan will be reimbursed on a half yearly basis to the beneficiaries. So far, loan amount of Rs. 3,374 crores has been dispersed to 16.73 lakh beneficiaries. 
and interest amount of rupees 88.33 crores reimbursed to 15.87 lakh beneficiaries who have repaid the loans on time. An amount of rupees 1580 crores has been dispersed by our government under YSR Bima during last 56 months towards claims of natural deaths, accidental deaths and permanent disability. My government is providing financial assistance to the poor parents to perform their daughter's marriage in a dignified manner under YSR Kalyana Mastu for girls belonging to SC, ST, BC, minorities, disabled construction worker families and through YSR Shadi Tofa for girls from Muslim communities. With the objective of encouraging children's education, preventing child marriages, increasing enrollment in schools and reducing the dropout rates, the state government is implementing the scheme with the condition that both the bride and the bridegroom must pass 10th class. Till date, an amount of rupees 350.89 crores has been dispersed to 46,329 beneficiaries under this program. All put together, my government has extended financial support to all the eligible persons irrespective of their caste, creed, religion, region, gender and political affiliation on saturation basis in a time-bound, transparent and corruption-free manner and delivered various welfare benefits amounting to a total of rupees 4.23 lakh crores through DBT and non-DBT mode since June 2019. Now, ease of living, rural and urban infrastructure and sanitation. Andhra Pradesh has been a leader in implementation of Mahatma Gandhi Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme and always stood in the top three places in the country in generation of person days with an average of 25 crore person days. A length of 53,481 kilometers of road works comprising of new connectivity, improvement repairs pertaining to national highways, state highways, district roads and rural roads have been taken up in the state. My government has recognized that rural road connectivity is an important component that brings faster growth and reduces poverty. During the year 2023-24, 58 BT roads have been laid for a length of 268 kilometers. An amount of rupees 261 crore has been spent under the Pradhana Mantri Grama Sadak Yojana with a view to provide pothole free and traffic worthy rural roads. My government has taken up repairs to the damaged BT road works have been sanctioned to improve the prioritized roads of the state highway for a length of 1,221 kilometer with a cost of rupees 490.80 crores and are targeted for completion by March 2024. 1,877 damaged BT roads covering a length of 4,635 kilometers at an estimated cost of 1,121.85 crore has been identified to make, make them pothole free and traffic worthy. The works are in progress in different stages. Ever since the APSRTC has been absorbed into government as public transport department, there has been vibrant development in terms of revenue realization and occupancy as well as 880 new buses have been introduced through hiring system replacing the old fleet. Water supply improvement schemes are being taken up in urban local bodies from time to time to improve per capita water supply on par with national standards. My government is giving top priority to provide protected drinking water to all urban local bodies by strengthening existing infrastructure and improving service levels. Currently, about 2,000 MLD of drinking water is being supplied to 123 ULBs with varied frequency in different ULBs. New projects have been taken up in Machli Patnam, Markapuram, Produtur, Kamalapuram, Narsapuram, 
and Amalapuram ULBs in this year with an estimated cost of rupees 327.38 crores and are in progress. My government has taken up Jagananna townships to promote planned and integrated development of various towns by providing basic infrastructure facilities and to address the aspirations of middle income group for quality housing and allied infrastructure by ensuring availability of clear title residential plots at affordable prices. At least two MIG layouts are to be identified in each constituency. 30 projects have been taken up with 12,042 plots, emphasizing the need to manage the process of urbanization and growth of cities. The union government has outlined the importance of developing cities and preparing a roadmap for achieving the same. As part of the larger process to develop cities under the initiative, Vishakapattam has been identified on pilot basis as one of the four city regions in the country and shall be developed as a growth hub. The Swachh Sankalpam, clean Andhra Pradesh, in intended to achieve little free garb litter free, garbage free, visually clean villages and to promote sustainable sanitation practices in rural Andhra Pradesh is being given priority. Efforts are to ensure 100% OD of sustenance in the, in the villages. My government is committed to complete the Polavaram project, giving highest priority and regarding the project as lifeline of Andhra Pradesh. All measures are being taken to complete the RR work simultaneously by rehabilitating PDF families emphatically. So far, 74.01% of overall work component and 22.42% of, of LA and RR works are completed. Sangam Barrage and Nellore Barrage across Penna River in SPSR Nellore district were completed and inaugurated by the Chief Minister to stabilize Ayakat and Pennar Delta system, Kavali Canal and Kanupur Canal. My government has addressed the leakage issue of Brahmam Sagar project through plastic diaphragm. Wall technology strengthened the Telugu Ganga project canal with lining works at a cost of rupees 600 crores to discharge water to all the projects in the in a short span of time, including Brahmam Sagar, and filled it to its full capacity of 17 TMC. My government has completed land acquisition and RR for Chitravati project at the cost of 280 crores and filled water to its capacity of 100 TM, 10 TMC. My government spent rupees 925 crores for rehabilitating displaced families of Gandhi Kota project and filled it with a full capacity of 27 TMCs. Second tunnel of oak has been completed, thereby enhancing capacity of SRBC to 20,000 Qsecs work on third tunnel is in brisk progress. My government succeeded in providing water to 77 minor irrigation tanks in Karnool and Nandial districts to irrigate over 10,000 acres through HNSS pump house project at Lakkasagram with an expenditure of rupees 253 crores. My government has completed the works of first tunnel as part of Veligonda project bringing much needed relief to drought prone areas of Aswail Prakasham, Nellore and Kadapa districts. I am happy to inform that second tunnel is also through just few days ago and will be dedicated to the people shortly. Thereby, Nallamala Sagar will be able to store water with Khari rains by September 2024. Focusing on the provision of water to Kupam constituency, the Kuppam branch canal works have been completed. The, wa the water in Pulichintala Chintila project has been stored to its full capacity of 45 TMCs by resolving the issue of R and R and paying an amount of rupees 142 crores to the affected families. My government is committed to providing adequate safe drinking water in the rural areas 
with full infrastructure to all households in the state with financial with functional household tap connections by 2025 including to the jagananna housing colonies through retro fitting augmentation new svs and drinking water projects to cover scarcity and quality problem areas 60.55 lakh that is 63% per, per, uh, of the households in the state have been provided with FHTCS incurring an expenditure of rupees 1561.30 crores under Jal Jeevan mission till the end of 2023. To cover stressed and quality affected habitations, my government has sanctioned nine drinking water projects with an amount of rupees 10,137 crores in nine districts of Srikakulam, YSR Kadapa, Karnul, East Godavari, West Godavari, Prakasham, Guntur, Krishna and Chitor. Now economic transformation. My government is committed to providing low cost and quality 24 into 7 power supply. Top priority is being given for promotion of renewable energy whose installed capacity accounts for 38% of total installed capacity of the state and contributes 24% to total generation. The state government has executed an agreement with the SECI for supply of power from 7,000 megawatt facility making available 70,000 MU per annum at a very attractive rate of 2.49 per kilowatt. The power from this source is envisaged for the supply of power to agriculture during daytime. Further, significant power generation capacity addition was also witnessed during the last two years with the commencement of operation of 800 MW of Damodaram Sanjeevaya Thermal Power Station at Krishnapatnam and 800 MW of Narla Tata Rao Thermal Power Station in Vijayawada. In order to reduce the energy losses, agriculture feeder segregation is also initiated which will provide 24 into 7 three-phase supply to all rural areas and will also give a big fillip to industries spreading to rural areas. My government is providing subsidy and concessions to different segments of the population in the energy sector under Navaratnalu. These include providing feeders to support 9 hours free power supply in daytime to 19.41 lakh agriculture pump sets in the state, extension of power supply to aqua farmers at rupees 1.50 per unit, free power to 200 units per month to every household in the SCST colonies, concessional tariff to BPL category of BC communities, professionals such as Dhobi, Dhobi guards, BPL, Rajaka, Rajaka community, etc. Total subsidy support of Rs. 48,175 crore has been provided by the government to the distribution utility still date. In recognition of this commitment of effi and efficiency, Andhra Pradesh state has won several awards and accolades in er energy sector. My government is committed to achieve rapid industrialization of the state through best in class policies, business reforms, and infrastructure development for balanced and inclusive growth. My government is taking a number of initiatives to attract the investment into the state. Industrial Development Policy 2023-27 of the state offers various incentives to all eligible industrial enterprises established in the state. During the Global Investment Summit in Vishakapatnam during March 23, 386 memorandums of understandings were signed with different investors offering investment over 13.11 lakh crores and committed employment to 6,7388 persons with the initiative taken by our government in the last 56 months over 311 large and mega industries have been established, providing employment to more than 1.30 lakh people. My government consistently ranked number one in ease of doing business for three consecutive years. We have also received numerous prestigious awards. YSR Jagananna 
Mega industrial hub is being developed over an extent of 3,150 acre near Koparthi node in VCIC. This industrial hub will act as multi-product mega industrial park with best-in-class infrastructure facilities. It is likely to attract an investment of rupees 25,000 crore with a potential to generate employment for 75,000 persons. The entire Koparthi region is being made conducive for industrial development by providing adequate industrial water supply through a 46 MLD water supply project. The Vishakapatnam Chennai, Chennai Bangalore Industrial Corridor and Hyderabad and Bangalore Industrial Corridor will not only promote industries but also create substantial urban infrastructure and contribute for the overall economic development of the state. The Vishakapatnam Node and Yerpedu Sri Kalahasti Node among the five nodes identified under the VCIC corridor have been prioritized for making initial investments. The VCIC attracts about 1, one lakh crores additional investment and generates additional employment to the tune of 100, 110 lakh persons. The corridor is expected to contribute to 5% of the national GDP and has potential to increase GDP in the corridor by six times. Now about the coast-led growth, ports and airports. The huge coastline of India has immense untapped potential to spur growth and positioning it as a maritime trade power. Andhra Pradesh with the second longest coastline of 974 kilometers has great potential to develop into a maritime trade center for Southeast Asia. The government has prioritized the development of 10 fishing harbors with an investment of rupees 3,800 crores to improve the livelihood of marine fishermen along with the coastline. These 10 fishing harbors will provide livelihood to more fishermen fishermen families. In order to give boost to the port-led development, we are developing four new ports at Ramaya Patnam, Moolapet, Machli Patnam and Kakinada Gateway with an investment of rupees 16,000 crores to increase the cargo handling capacity to 100 million tons, creating jobs for 75,000 people. Construction of 10 fishing harbors and six fish landing centers with the world-class infrastructure is under brisk progress to benefit fishermen. Andhra Pradesh Maritime Board has been recognized as Maritime Board of the Year by the World Logistics and Supply Chain Congress. My government is expanding the construction of Bhogapuram International Greenfield Airport in Vijayanagaram district. The construction work has started at Bhogapuram on 3rd May and the airport will be ready for commissioning in 30 months time. We have also expanded airports in Gannavaram, Vishakapatnam, Rajamundri, Tirupati, Karnul and Kadapa. The Andhra Pradesh Information Technology Policy 2021-2024 introduced by my government to promote the information technology sector is striving to ensure that the fruits of IT reach the last mile. Work on two significant projects including integrated data center and technology business park at Madurwada, Vishakapatnam district with an investment of rupees 14,634 crore for a 200 MW data center and another project in Kapulapada. Kapulapada, Kalupada, Bhimu Nipatnam, Vishakapatnam district, involving an investment of rupees 7,220 crore for a 100 MW data center has started. Infosys established a development center in Vishakapatnam, solidifying the city's position as an emerging IT destination and enhancing the economic prospects of the state as a whole. 
the government is promoting tourism as an important growth engine of the state economy as well as a significant job creator. I am happy to share with you that my government has undertaken a number of initiatives including the Andhra Pradesh Tourism Policy 2020 to 2025 which has been rated among the best in the country for the growth and development of the tourism sector in the state. The state focuses on attracting international tourists by offering state-of-the-art facilities as a preferred destination. Andhra Pradesh has been recognized by the Ministry of Tourism, Government of India, as the third most popular tourism destination in the country. Several hotels of international repute, such as Oberoi Group, No Hotel, and Mayfair Hotels and Resorts Limited, and Hyat Regency, are investing in Andhra Pradesh. 17 tourism projects are under various stages of implementation with an investment of rupees 3,685 crores with a potential to create employment to 7,290 people. Effective implementation of the policies and programs which have ensured encouraging growth performance during 2022-23 continued during the financial year 23-24 also. The economy of the state continues, continues its encouraging trend, recovering swiftly from COVID-19 fallout. The advanced estimates for 2023-24 indicate an overall growth of 10.2% at current prices. All the three sectors of the economy, that is agriculture and allied industries and services, depict significant growth performance. The industry and services sectors have helped the economy to register higher overall growth. The per capita income of Andhra Pradesh at cur current prices has moved up from 2,19,519 in 2022-23 to 2,42,479 in 2023-24, demonstrating an impressive growth rate of 10.43%. Governance at the people's doorsteps. My government is committed in decentralization in letter and spirit, which demonstrated at various levels of governance. 13 new districts have been carved out, and this has brought the administration closer to the citizens. Urban and rural administration is closer to the people than ever before, with establishment of 15,004 village and ward secretariats. In all, 1.35 lakh employees have been recruited and placed in each secretariat, catering to the needs of every 2,000 citizens. In addition, 2.6 lakhs volunteers have been recruited all over the state to deliver government services to the beneficiaries at their doorstep. Through this secretariat system, the entire public service delivery mechanism has undergone a phenomenal change. Till date, 9.84 crore transactions have been successfully completed by utilizing 540 plus services of various government departments in a time-bound manner. Jagananna Suraksha, an innovative program was conducted successfully in which the government distributed around 1 crore certificates including caste, income, marriage, pension cards, Arogeshri cards and death certificates at the people's doorstep. My government has embarked on an unprecedented resurvey of land holdings across the state, which is being done after a gap of 100 years to resolve the land disputes and to provide permanent land titles. Resurvey of 42.6 lakhs acres in 4,000 villages out of a total of 17,460 revenue villages in two phases was completed under YSR Jagannana, Jagannana Shashwata Bhu Akku Mariyu Bhu Raksha program. This facilitated 17.53 lakh farmers to receive permanent title deeds, resolve 4.8 lakh mutations and make 10,021 lakh new subdivisions. Resurvey work 
in third phase. 2,000 villages is going on at a brisk, brisk pace. Distribution of land to the poor and provision of, uh, of full rights on the lands would benefit 24,709 landless poor people across the state to an extent of 35,44,866 acres of land. My government is keen to ensure that welfare and development schemes reach beneficiaries at their doorsteps transparently and satisfactorily. If any services are not reaching the people, the government takes immediate steps to rectify this under the Gadapa, Gadapaku Manaprabhutvam program. Public representatives visited every household explaining the welfare and development in developmental initiatives taken up by the government and simultaneously took prompt action in resolving the issues raised by the people. Works worth not less than rupees 20 lakhs were sanctioned for each village ward secretariat after identifying the gap in the infrastructure and other requirements. Now I'll be concluding. I would like to conclude my speech with the words of Mahatma Gandhi who said and I quote, Progress of a society should be determined by the state of the most vulnerable and weakest ones. People who are farthest from the frontiers of development are to be brought up to the level of the others for real development." Unquote. All the development and welfare measures put in place for the welfare of the poorest most vulnerable, underprivileged, and remotest are exactly on these lines, and there is every need to continue the development momentum till the future generations enjoy its fruits perennially. I am hopeful that people's cooperation and strong support will continue in future also for continuing the development momentum. Yeah, yeah.